Hello, Tubal Kane again. In the last video we talked about turning to diameter on the Atlas lathe, but today uh, I want to show you how to turn to a shoulder. We avoided a shoulder in the last one because it was just one more thing that would have to be covered, but uh, when we're turning uh, our work and then we come to, uh, we call this a shoulder or a step, and we back it out, clean that off, that's uh, what we call turning to a shoulder. Now, in order to uh, do that, you need to have uh, the correct tool. Now, I'm going to use a turning tool, right-hand turning tool. Remember, it's right-hand when it's facing you, the cutting surface to the right. But a uh, right-hand turning tool is uh, has a little radius on the end, and the included angle is about 80 or 85 degrees, or somewhat less than 90 degrees, and the purpose of that is because when we come into a shoulder, we need to have, uh, it's 90 degree, 90 degree shoulder, so naturally our tool has to be a little bit less than 90. Now the radius causes a little bit of a problem. It allows us to get a nice smooth finish, but we're not going to get a perfectly square corner. Now if you have to have a square corner, there are a couple things you can do. One is to go ahead and turn it like I'm going to show you with the turning tool and then come back in with a facing tool and face that corner, come in and, and clean that uh, radius out of there, and then face uh, out. Uh, that's one more setup. You might want to avoid that, but that can be done. Remember that a facing tool is usually ground at 55 degrees or somewhat less than 60, so that, in fact, if we are turning between centers, we would be, let the white represent the uh, tailstock center, would allow you to get in there and face while you are holding it between centers. Now, why you would ever want to do that, I don't know. I never have, but that's really the way we were taught, and that's what a lot of the books show, but that's the purpose of the 55 degree angle. Now, one another way to do it yet is to uh, cut have a little undercut, something like this, that I'm drawing in with a pencil. That could be done with a cutoff tool or a parting tool. And uh, then you're not going to have a radius there. But for purposes of discussion today, I'm going to have a slight radius there and uh, because I'm using a right-hand turning tool. Now we're going to step over to the Atlas lathe. This picture is out of the Atlas book called the Manual of Lathe Operation. And it's a, a good one of uh, the right hand turning tool. And it just shows some of the different angles. And if you want to pause your video, you can uh, study this a little bit. Or if you don't want to, just ignore it. We're at the Atlas lathe now. And I have a piece of half inch cold roll steel mounted in a three jaw chuck. We've got the right hand turning tool uh, set in the... Uh, left hand turning tool holder and it's on center and our speed is set it's the same as the last video and we're going to turn this to this layout line now you don't have to use a layout line but that is one of the methods you can use to uh, uh, turn to a shoulder another is that sometimes uh, if it's just a, a project it doesn't need a lot of accuracy you can just use your a machinist scale and hold it alongside or put your thumb on it and uh, com you can complete your cut that way let's say it, it was a uh, seven eighths of an inch It'd be pretty easy to do especially if you have a slow feed if you want it just a little more accurate use a square or this depth gauge preset to whatever your length is and uh, you'll actually feel that uh, hit the shoulder as you make your cut that's a good method we're going to use a, a third method, and that is to, or a fourth method, I guess it is, uh, we're going to use our carriage stop. So I'll reset the camera and show you what that is. This is the carriage stop on an Atlas lathe. It is, uh, it isn't included with a lathe, it's an accessory, so not all of you will have the luxury of owning one of these, but it clamps right onto the bed. There are two bolts here and can be moved into any different position uh, throughout the length of the lathe bed. And uh, it has a, a little uh, stop here that the carriage moves up against and you'll feel the carriage hit it. 
but I wouldn't hit it under power feed. I would uh, come to it by hand. This is called a micrometer stop because we can ad adjust it and a, there's even graduations on here to a thousandth of an inch. So if you want to take a cut and the cut isn't quite right, you could adjust it right here uh, with this knurled uh, thumb holder here. It's a real nice unit. I have one on my closing layer too. Slightly different design because we have V-ways on the closing. Alright, we're going to start the machine and using our power feed we will uh, advance our uh, tool up to the layout line but I do have the uh, carriage stop set. So here we go. Now I would take my uh, micrometer uh, reading for the diameter and determine how much I have to take off and I would take another pass or however many passes that are necessary. Let me take one more pass, just a uh, random diameter. When I get to the end uh, and I'm satisfied that is the diameter that I want, then I will feed the cross feed out and that would uh, clean it up. One other thing I like to do is I'm, in order to clean up that shoulder and back out my cross feed, I am going to uh, change the setting on that carriage stop just a little bit so I can feed in a little farther and uh, I, then I will feed out. Okay, so I've got just a little more and now I'm feeding it out. I, of course, did not take it down to a specific diameter, but uh, uh, that's how you turn to a shoulder on the lathe. Tubal cane, so long for now.